Hey, what's up? We're live. Thank you and welcome aboard. Um, let me know as always if you can hear me well, see me well. Wasn't planning for the picture to be open, so I'm going to close everything for a moment. Uh, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Dusit, for reminding me about Sergei Temerov, whom I forgot the uh, last live stream. That's funny. Uh, so I talked about someone who's a genius with painting clouds. And today we're going to paint clouds for that reason. And thanks to his inspiration. I'm going to turn on the stream in the background so that I can see things properly in case I don't over on my dashboard. Um, and I want to thank you everyone who's here. Uh, Michelle Homewood is in the house. Hey Lauren, I don't usually watch live tutorials, so I enjoy yours last Thursday. But I so enjoyed yours last Thursday that I'm back again. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I do see the stream's a little slow. Maybe the connection's a little... Uh, a little crowded. I don't know, maybe it's a little slow, so you'll forgive me. It usually uh, works itself out later and then it works okay, so uh, hopefully yes. Uh, Dayfen, hi, how are you? Uh, says yes, we can hear you clearly. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us always. So today, let me get into what we're going to do today. And hey John, thank you for being here. Um, let me check my settings just to make sure that I didn't do anything stupid that makes it work a little slower. Uh, and I'll try closing some stuff in the background, but I think it should be okay. Uh, yeah, no, we're good, we're good. It's just the silliness uh, of our connection sometimes. It's not as fast. Uh, but yeah, we'll deal with it. And if it gets worse later, then you'll will have to forgive me. Uh, and I want to make the air condition a little stronger. Of course, I forgot my towel, my streaming towel to wipe off the sweat. Uh, so basically today we're going to paint clouds. Let me show you the reference in its entirety. So this is the complete reference. But to be fair, we're not going to paint this hugeness. Uh, we're going to paint a small cropped part of it, which is uh, this. Okay. Uh, and to be more precise, we're going to work black and white because it's hard enough as it is. So this is going to be our uh, actual reference for today. Let me make it a little bigger. So we're going to be in this together. It's not going to be an easy subject. I have to admit it's going to be quite a challenging one, actually. Um, let me close another app here. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be quite a challenging uh, reference and what I want to show you is something we've talked about a lot recently just by chance uh, and that is that the reference itself doesn't matter as much. It doesn't matter what it is you're painting. What's more important is that you follow your method, your fundamentals, whatever you want to call it. And based on my approach, that's mostly the values and the shapes and getting those accurately. Um, so it doesn't really matter as much what the subject is. And uh, I want to use this piece of knowledge to encourage you to paint whatever you want because, again, because it doesn't matter, because you can produce a beautiful result no matter what you paint, uh, it all has to do with your approach to the process itself. And, it, it again, the, the result doesn't matter as much as following a good process, which is hopefully what we'll do today. So uh, let's see who's in the house and thank you so much. If you can, drop a like on the video, it really helps it reach more people. We have Amal Murali says hello. We have Monto Art. Hello from India. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you. Kelvin Zero Cloud. It's formless, so it should be easy to paint. But in fact, it's really difficult for some odd reason. Yeah, it's just like uh, a pattern. Uh, if you look at these clouds here, it's and, and I mastered it because I'm seeing things in reverse. So I think that I should do this to point at the clouds, but it's actually here. So I mastered the skill. The clouds here, uh, you'll notice they're kind of like in a pattern uh, and the pattern can be very hard to capture and there is a lot of actually complex technique involved and we're gonna see how it goes i'm gonna treat this whole thing as a bunch of abstract shapes uh, and there's a lot of it there's a lot of these abstract shapes here and let me show you actually on my desk here because i have the uh, i have the pictures printed in front of me so that i can use them though i'll probably use uh the picture on the screen we'll see uh, but I guess, so you see there's this huge cloud here and then a couple of clouds below and clouds in the background. Uh, now if we turn it black and white, it's a little easier seeing the value. So this is actually quite light. It's kind of a nice mid value here, right around here. Now here it's a little darker, here it's a little darker, here it's a little darker. So I think in order to, let's say, talk strategy, 
we can divide this painting into two parts. One is the top part, everything that's here, and one is the bottom part. The reason we can do that is that this part is actually completely guarded by the highlights here. So we have a stopping point. We can stop where these highlights are. And that gives us time to work everything that's in this area and do wet and wet and work it and rework it and rework it, okay? Uh, so we can start, for example, here top left corner, start putting in the paint around these highlights and then slowly darkening some spots and then seeping through the highlights and moving on to these bottom parts of the clouds darker here, slightly lighter there. Skipping the highlights, not going to be easy. Uh, you can s s make a good argument for uh, masking tape here. Uh, definitely a possibility, something that uh, you may want to consider. But there's just so much of it, I'd much rather try and paint um, around it. Now I want to show you one more thing. So this is, we're going to do two, okay? I gave myself two versions of sketches to kind of want to familiarize myself with it and then want to attempt it to be more accurate. So the first one, I tried putting more emphasis on a very sketchy kind of outline that shows the main cloud. So this is the, the one here and then we have the, the back here. Now the second one is actually a lot more detailed, which can be more confusing, okay? This can be more confusing. This isn't necessarily better, uh, but we'll try, we'll try, we'll try. This, I marked more of the shapes I saw, like the darkness here. Uh, we may end up finding out that this would have been easier to paint from because there's less of a drawing, so we can focus more on what we see. But who knows? In fact, I think I'll take this on the wall in front of me just to make sure that I can see it well and it's in one consistent spot and I don't keep moving it around and then you can see it on the screen. So here we go. Just going to tape it above my computer. Uh, and then I'm going to just in one second take a look and see who's in the chat and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them because once we jump into the process, I'll have to probably do it and all the way till the end because you can't really take a break in this kind of a, except for here the midpoint uh, There you can take a break and again It's all about rendering what you see rendering think of yourself like a software that recreates the shapes and the values that you see and that's what it's all about um, And you don't think about what it is you're painting but rather you're thinking like a robot in a way of what's the value What's the shape? Okay? Uh, Leslie Drake says hello from uh, an American in the UK, Sonia Moyer Kurevia, hi from Canada, uh, Robert Karp, hello from Pennsylvania, Joy Su, hi from Taiwan, Prama, hello Liron, Jensa Blaker, hi Liron, greetings from a wet and windy London, uh, all excited about football and tennis, yeah there's a lot going on right now, uh, Mary Roda, hi Mary from England, Sharon Hauser, hi from San Jose, California, cool, so you have good representation from many places, I'm going to hit the swing button to make sure the air condition reaches me and I'm going to make it stronger. There we go. Um, and then we have Janelle Johnson. Hello from Wisconsin, US. Nancy G. Morning from Akron, Ohio. Have you ever checked out Alan Owen? I think he creates lovely watercolor skies. Yeah, Alan Owen. I love his work. Um, uh, definitely a, a favorite of mine. Um, a very good approach uh, when you're getting started, very easy to get started, I like that. Um, so I think with that we can get started with the first demo and if anyone's late to the stream, no worries, we're gonna have another one as I've shown you. Uh, let me move this a bit here, put this here. I'm sticking to my Lebensen brushes right around here uh, because I think they'll be good for the small details and the patterns, we'll see about that. Uh, we'll see how easy or hard <laughs> this process gets. <laughs> Uh, but we just have to go for it in order to find out, right? Uh, so I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna use black, just this black color here, not this, this black color here, which is kind of a neutral black um, by Kohinoor. Uh, but any black color will do. Uh, do you want me to zoom in a bit on uh, the, the sketch? I think it will be better if I zoom in just a bit. So maybe you can see more of the details that way. So let me lower it a bit. Sorry for my elbow in the way. That's not enough. I'm, I say, oh, let's zoom in and then I barely do anything. There we go, that's better. I think that's better at least. Now you get to see a bit more of the details. Now let me fix the focus for just one second. Um, advanced. Yeah, so we're gonna want to have our 
Where is it? Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay, I think it's in focus. I think we're okay. Let me just check. We're kind of okay. Can it get more focus? Let's see. Just give me one second to make sure that we're as sharp as we need to be. There we go, that's better. Save. Okay, so I think that's better and we can get started. Uh, I think I have quite a lot of streams where I just was out of focus for like the entire thing. Uh, and because I removed the autofocus, it was just um, not good. So let me just mix a bunch of black paint here. I don't care if a bit of my other colors kind of seeps into that, I'm fine because it's mostly gonna still be neutral. It's gonna be quite simple to keep this one neutral. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, and should I use, yeah, I'll, I'll put, I'll use the reference on my screen. I just, I can see it a little better. And I actually have my reference photo opened up in a bit of a smaller size. Uh, so that I can see it from afar, because I, I need to get an understanding of the overall picture, if you will. Um, so getting started with this corner, and what we're going to do here is use the tactic of not moving forward until we're happy with one area, not expanding our wash before we are completely done with an area. Uh, this is something I experienced a lot of my students having trouble with, of kind of um, being in a hurry to skip to the next uh, next painting, it's either from uh, a next part of the painting, it's either from uh, worrying about the wash drying on them or just being in a hurry, kind of hurry worry, I will say. Uh, so we're going to try and avoid that today. So I'm starting with this corner here and it's actually going to dry lighter so I'm not too worried about it looking a little dark but I am going to feed it with a bit of slightly darker paint here, okay? Uh, we'll see how it will go, but for now, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and then we're going to move to a slightly lighter paint right below that. Uh, here, on the, below the highlights of the clouds, right? Um, not easy shapes, so I'm kind of using improvisation, but I'm also trying to stay loyal to what I see. Uh, one thing to have in mind is... The drawing itself here is still quite simplified, okay? So uh, I'm, I don't expect myself to follow everything I see at all. Okay, now you'll notice there's a kind of a secondary line of clouds, right? Kind of like here. Now this may be too dark, though I'm not sure yet. It looked okay initially, but now I'm like, okay, maybe it's a little too dark. Uh, we'll see. I'll just keep this moving. Let's go a little lighter here, just in case. Sorry if I moved the camera. Uh, and we'll see later what dries what, uh, like what, and then we'll figure it out. So one thing I'm not concerned with is actually the um, edges. Uh, I don't have too much time to worry about it, honestly. Uh, I'd much rather get something that's a decent result, even if the edges are a little sloppy, uh, than having to take a long time and think about these things because I'll, I'll just, I won't be able, able to get over it if I do. Uh, and we're in this together. This is not an easy subject, okay? It's definitely not an easy subject. Even just navigating around the shapes I see is not easy, okay? So here we have a bit of a highlight. Um, yep, kind of like that. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm seeing here. So this should be darker, like this. There's a darker section. Hopefully it will dry a little lighter than the way it appears right now. And let's continue with this slightly dark section all the way here and then bring back some more water and kind of lighten it up, okay? And in theory, if we do things like this and we're able to follow the shapes successfully, we should get a good result. But there are no guarantees, as you know. Uh, so this is actually a pocket of darkness and here it stops and this is where we have the second row of clouds in which we'll kind of um, stop okay it's our stopping point it's what allows us to have a little bit of ease when painting this 
once I uh, finish this section, I'll, um, I'll try and kind of look at things and figure out how we're doing and how it's been going so far, maybe answer a few questions and then we'll continue to the second half. So yeah, quite a complex scene, I would say. Now, you also want to see if there are areas that need a darkening. For example, there's a pocket here I kind of missed, so I'm going to grab a bit of slightly opaque paint. And it's still kind of moist, but very, very, barely, it's barely moist. Uh, we can spray a bit of water. Uh, where is my sprayer? Here it is. Maybe here where it's still a little wet and maybe get a few of these very gentle areas that may be slightly darker, but uh, for the most part this is it. And let, let me look at it from the screen, screen from afar. It actually looks decent. Not perfect at all, <laughs> but decent. Um, I'm not going for simplification right now yet. What I'm actually going for is just trying to get some kind of a shape that looks like the clouds. Um, so we'll see about that. Now I'm gonna let it dry a bit, then we'll continue with the lower part of this wash, okay? Um, and hopefully you can see this well in kind of the comparison with the reference. It's super complex. Uh, we'll see how it dries. Let's answer a few questions in the meantime and then once it dries we'll take a look. Maybe I'll get myself a towel. Give me like 10 seconds. I'll be back in 10 seconds. <laughs> Good. Uh, so hopefully you're enjoying it so far. Now, if you're worried about edges, we can actually uh, modify some of them. This is, this is actually pretty easy. You know what? Let me use a dryer just to dry this real fast. Uh, and then we'll work on some of the edges. Okay, just a second. Good. So a couple of things here. First, I will allow myself in this painting the freedom of using opaque paint, um, lifting if necessary. Um, I'm going to pre-wet and do wet in wet. There's going to be a lot of technique involved here because there's a lot of complexity. Uh, but for in the meantime, I'm actually quite happy with it. Let me show you a bit of what uh, blending the edge will look like. Then I'll answer some questions and we'll continue. So generally, the trend I'm seeing is the edges here are smoother than above. So you get this beautiful contrast in the edges too. I said I won't worry about them, but it does look a little necessary. So sharp edge from the top and softer edge from the bottom. The reason is the shape of the clouds. This is a shadow on this cloud, while this is the back of the behind it. So this is gradual. So let's do this. Let's try and blend a few of these edges underneath and see how we're doing. So anything here in the slope looks like it should be a little looser, you see? Uh, here. And you always have to wet the brush again and clean it up or else uh, you'll get some not so nice uh, effects. And you see how it starts to give it this kind of a smoothness I'm trying not to overdo it. I'll only do it in areas where it feels the most important. Okay. Um, yeah. So right here, actually, all of these sections to the left. Get some of it blended. See how it just creates this nice little variety of edges there and gives it maybe a bit more credibility. Uh, here it's really important too, like this this line should definitely be softer, softer edge. Um, here as well, too much water will absorb some of them. The technique is very simple. You just come back with a moist brush and touch the edge of the paint where the paint meets the water. Let me show you slowly and up close, you see, like that. And in, in some of these cases, you do better if you'll search for the hard edges and worry about what not to blend. 
because there's just so much here that you can soften. So I would worry about what not to touch rather than what to touch. So I'm going to avoid this section, I'm going to avoid this section, this section, so you know what to do. Now this is pretty much in the periphery of the painting, so I'll kind of blend it out just to maybe take away some of the attention on it. Uh, and yeah, we're pretty much done with the upper half. Now let me show it to you up close from afar. Hopefully it will make a little more sense. Not an easy one for sure, but we'll see. In the context of the full painting, maybe it will make more sense. Now, one more thing to remember, we're dealing with, again, an abstract shape. So on first glance, you may not, you may, it may not make sense to you. You'll look at it and you'll think, okay, it does not look like the thing it should look like. You need to see it in its entirety once we're done. Okay, that's my point. Uh, now, well, we're actually good. I should have continued this shape, but that's fine. So let me answer some questions. We'll see uh, what you're saying. And hopefully we can make this look like clouds eventually. We'll see about that. Um, so we were right around and Nancy G. Artistica says, hi, Leslie Drake. Hi, James Baker. Windy, but dry here in Liverpool. Uh, Darlene Plant says, hi, from Canada. Debbie Dunlap says, hello, from Wyoming. Richard Bennett, hello, peeps. Hello again, Leron. Hey, Richard, how are you? Artistica, did pen art with chalk paint? Cool. What's pen art? Uh, Amanda Fraser, hi, from the northeast of England. Tambo Artwork says, Texas says, hi. Hey, so hey, Texas. Uh, Jose Ramos, Pepe, no, okay, I, I don't know if I can read that. Pepe de Puerto Rico is not easy for me to do, but hope you'll help me because you're a good teacher, man. Have a, have a nice day. Thank you so much, Jose. Um, send me an email if you haven't, I'll take a look. Uh, Monica NJ, possibly New Jersey, Leron, great subject. Thank you, Cubs win. From Texas, love watching you paint. Thank you so much. Tom Dancer, hey all. Jade Moonchild, hello Liron. Hey, I immediately recognize you by the emoji, Jade. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, da, 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 da. We're all in this together, yeah. Uh, Joyce says, it looks very difficult, so nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Lord Eldridge, how macabre. Uh, I don't know if it's macabre. Uh, James L. Baker, would you consider laying a grid on the painting and referencing to be able to focus on details of each section? Yeah, sometimes I'll do that. The thing is, you need to make sure that the grid doesn't make it too hard, because sometimes it can have the adverse effect of making it more complex to see what you're doing. So uh, it really is a matter of practicing it, uh, because think about it this way. You can't have too many grids, too many grid lines, because then you have to start counting, and you look at a reference, and you're like, okay, it's one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. It could be a little complex. So uh, you really need to practice it. And even then you may not have an easy time doing it. Uh, Nancy G says, looks great already. A difficult cloud study. Oh my. Uh, um, and by the way, for anyone who's um, either frustrated if the, the live stream lags or gets stuck, or you want just to process, I... I'm thinking of doing more videos where I'll, I'll actually post just the painting process, probably on Instagram too. I've started doing it, but I want to do more of that. So just letting you know, that's going to be a thing. Uh, which Levens and brush are you using? I got one uh, in deer with a super long tip. Uh, so I have this one that has quite a long tip. Uh, I think you can, should be able to see it right here. So this is the small silver fox. Now the one I used, was it? Yeah, it was this one. Uh, so it was the goat, I believe, uh, large goat. This one. And sorry if anyone's vegan or not using animal hair. Uh, I should use more synthetics. Uh, Ian Roy Art says, excellent. Bruce Wayne sends a lot of palettes. Uh, Johnny too. The dark spots look too adventurous. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, Judy Franklin. Wow, really super sky. Tom Dancer. Hey, Leron, looking great. Second live in a row. Thank you for being here. Uh, formerly username. Oh, Tidus. Yeah, I remember. Uh, but after hearing someone actually say it out loud, I realized it didn't make sense. So Tom Dancer, uh, you'll see uh, the video. Uh, oh, yeah, the video. Was it out? Um, it should be out on Saturday, the video with the comment of yours that I liked. Um, so I do want to say a word or two about this subject and why also why I decided to paint it. So one thing I try to always tout is um, if you're having a trouble with, with a certain problem, isolate it, focus only on that. And I find clouds in skies like the one we painted last week's live stream uh, quite a challenge. Um, and for that reason, I want to work on skies in particular. And because it's so complex, I don't want to work on a sky that's a part 
of a landscape, I want to isolate my problem and work on the clouds as they are just the clouds, okay? Um, and that way I can look at it more as an abstract uh, subject and kind of get it a little more easily. Um, and it's just a bit easier to approach that way. And I hope that makes sense. Um, because it really is hard to tackle multiple problems at once. So for example, if you're in, I want to blend this edge too. Nice little edge here. That looks much, much better. By the way, I can use this brush to lift dark areas that are unnecessary. I'm thinking what else I can do with it, because there's a lot. Like there's a lot of nuance here in clouds that I could lift. So for example, uh, I didn't get this range of clouds above the shadow, so I could just do this and kind of lift back. Maybe, if I succeed, <laughs> a few of them here. And this brush is really nice, but it's not Superman, so I can do anything I want with it. So yeah, and I, I'm not sure about this paint, but it could be a little um, staining. I'm, not, I'm actually not sure about the stainability, if that's a word, uh, of the paint. Uh, Susie, Susie and Piper, so happy to find you doing a live show. Usually I miss them, so welcome aboard. I'm happy you didn't miss this one. Uh, Vera Underdown, will this be available on YouTube later? Yes, yes, it will. I keep all of my live streams up later. Debbie Dunlap, what brush are you using for blending? Uh, so yeah, it's, oh, I forgot the name. I believe, yeah, it's the Royal and Langnickel. Let me show it to you up close. Uh, hopefully you can uh, see it. Royal and Langnickel Zen number six. And there's this number here that may help you, Z83SC. Um, provided by John. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. Um, Let's see here, VNCPN, sorry Lion, I'm late, thank you for being here, no worries about being late. Joyce, hi from uh, Michigan, I believe, am I? Shelly Pryor, fine art, I recently finished a live cloud demonstration as well, enjoying watching your approach, thank you so much Shelly, I hope you're doing well. Uh, uh, your approach as it appears different than mine, but very effective, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm not exactly sure what your approach is, but I do see a lot of people doing wet and wet with these. Um, and I don't think wet, like pure wet and wet covering the whole page will work in this particular reference. Um, and it says hi from uh, very rainy southern Ontario, Canada. Cool. Um, Barb White, hi from Ohio, excited about the subject. Streams very laggy or is it just me? It's not just you, it's, I have some issues on my end, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, love your painting style, says Susie. I'm trying to build uh, my knowledge and confidence to be able to paint a similar way. You know what I think I should try? I'm not even sure my Mac can do that. Uh, but what I can do is maybe connect it directly to the internet. Maybe just using a cable, like what do you call it, an ethernet, uh, instead of Wi-Fi. I think I'll try that kind of a thing out. Maybe I should, maybe it'll make things faster despite the slow connection. But yeah, when, when it's gonna improve, you will uh, hopefully notice it. <laughs> Sorry about that, I know, yeah. Uh, if it's unwatchable, just let me know and we can switch to talking. Uh, but yeah, sorry about that. So let us continue with uh, the lower half, okay? Not easy, I'm gonna start with this section because um, it's just small, it's still, I haven't reached the clouds yet, so this is, just this section. So I'm gonna blend this, maybe it'll make for a smoother transition and then come back with the same brush, I think. And we'll just, sorry, I moved the camera. No, I'm good. And just continue filling it in with that kind of similar value you see here. Uh, and we can actually, while it's still wet, try and blend the edges. So we'll give it a go. We'll just paint uh, over all of the entirety of the area. And I'm gonna use a bit of dry brush just to vary the edges a bit, like that. And then while it is still dry, I'm gonna pick up the uh, Wangi Brown Synthetic brush and try and blend this edge like this. So we'll hopefully get a bit of a better result than uh, with the blending brush because you'll always get a better result um, while it's still wet, you know, it's not the brush's fault. Uh, so yeah, now let us continue. I'm gonna start from this corner, move all the way. Now, uh, here's the area. I told you we'll divide it to two, but we'll actually divide it to three. So here we have another break, lucky for us. 
Um, this is, I don't know what that is, because I don't think it should be here. So this, oh, I know what it is, but I shouldn't have drawn it. This shouldn't be here. Uh, so we're going to kind of stop our wash here. Okay, we're, we're essentially painting this. Now, the fun thing about it is that it is all right to left. Uh, so we may discover that we're having a bit of an easier time to keep the flow going. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so this goes here and then it just continues from here. The wash simply continues. And then this goes like that. There's a lot of small nuance in the shapes that I'm not getting because this drawing is a little more simplified again. Uh, we may do the second, probably do the second one that's a little more complex. Now let's get it to look a little darker. As we move to the left, I do see the clouds are getting slightly darker and stronger in this area. And remember, we can lift, we can use opaque paint later for anything we messed up. Uh, no mistakes are final, even though it's watercolor and I know a lot of people fear it in that regard. Um, and then this goes around here. And I do want to do some, again, darker paint for this spot here. All of this spot is darker. See, that's a nice little effect. And this actually goes a little lighter near this edge. Now, when I'm working this way, I'm prioritizing the flow over a lot of things. So if I'm getting a shape inaccurately, uh, I'll actually move forward in spite of it. Uh, just because you, the flow here is crucial, even more important than getting things accurately in a way. The reason I can allow that is because I did create a sketch that kind of supports my way of painting, right? So I can afford to delegate some things to automation when it comes to the shapes because I see it clearly with my pencil lines. But uh, generally speaking, yes, I do prioritize here a lot of the shapes in favor of the flow. Now let's dry some edges while they're still wet. I think it'll give it this nice little divine look, right? Let's go here, this edge. Um, this edge that reaches in, we can actually do this kind of a thing. Pour some water in it. It's lighter here anyway. And maybe even blend the top part of the edge. At the top here, we have a very distinct soft edge right around there. So you see, it kind of gives it a feeling of the variation of edges that clouds tend to have. And I'll, I'm going to stick to this brush while I have it here. Then switch to the large one. Again, I'm going to paint around this little highlight. It's going to be another cloud right at the bottom around this shape. And if you know the shape you're painting, you can go fast, right? So you don't have to, and I'm going to put two layers of clouds here. You see this beautiful layer? Um, you don't have to paint slowly for the sake of painting slowly, if that makes sense. I don't know if it does, but I, I do see sometimes people do it and I do it myself. Now, it's funny, this process may seem slow, but the second one will probably be even slower um, because it's going to be more detailed. We have more to work off of. I actually really like this, how it starts light. Um, let's put a shadow there. It starts light and then it kind of goes dark near the bottom. That's a really cool effect. Makes you feel like the light kind of seeps through the cloud and I really like that thing. So here we're working a little differently than here. Here we did wet and wet. Here we're kind of working with the value we see. And the reason we can do that is, by the way, because uh, this is kind of a long shape. So I have a bit of a, an easier time grasping it in my mind and kind of, kind of painting it. I really hope this shows like okay at least because um, I'm really enjoying this process and I think it ends up looking very interesting. Uh, but if not, if you're looking at a three frame per second PowerPoint, uh, <laughs> my apologies. Um, yeah. My apologies in the meantime. So here it's actually a lot of highlights. So let me get rid of some of the paint I put here. Um, this is actually much more well lit. I'm going to use my finger and kind of like that. Now we can look at it and ask ourselves, uh, are, are, do some areas need darkening? So a bit of dark here, a bit of darkness. Um, 
there's a lot of details that I kind of left out uh, that maybe in the more detailed version I will be able to get. And now let's switch real quick to our smaller brush, the Wangi, and blend some of the edges, right? So this is blended. And if you can stop your wash and blend the edges, it's not easy, but if you can do that like I did that here, that's the best. And if not, we can always do it. Once it's a little dry, it'll still work, right? Um, but you will learn with time how to kind of oscillate and move between, alternate rather, between the two modes. Um, and do both. Uh, the more things you can do simultaneously with the watercolor, it really is uh, the better. Uh, now, let us use our bit of a more dedicated blending brush. Um, because as things do start to dry up now, so it's a bit harder to use the other brushes. We need something with a strong spring in it. This, for example, this section it needs to be heavily lifted. So let's see if I can get it down. Kind of scrubbed, you see? Because that's actually an individual piece of cloud. Like that. That's nice. And what other kind of sharp edges are really standing out like this really stands out. So here we go, see? And yeah, I think that's good. Uh, I do love how in this small cloud, there is this part of the top edge that's also quite blended. So we'll do that. Uh, and I think we can move on to finalizing this with adding the clouds at the bottom. These will be a little easier. So I'm going to use a lot more water here. They're quite light and they're at the sides of the painting. So we don't need too much detail there. It's funny, but sometimes when you're working this way, very fast and kind of loose, you end up getting the best result. And if I had, I painted everything like that, uh, might have gotten a better result. Funny how that works, right? Um, it's only because uh, it kind of delegates again more to that subconscious part of you. Um, oh, I see an edge that really annoys me. So I'm going to get that done in just a second. Like this. And then we have some more clouds here at the bottom. Kind of like that. I like to keep this section a little more impressionistic. And now let's get rid of this edge that drives me crazy. Here, there's a lot of them actually, a lot of sharp edges that I missed. So here, this top part, uh, we do need some areas of this top line to blend because it is after all a fluffy cloud. So something like this, you know, points that will connect it to the background. Um, this here, like that. Uh, what else kind of bugged me? This, this really bugs me here, like this. Um, here, also very important, see? And I think we'll give it a rest just for a few seconds and, and kind of wait it out and see what else needs corrections because uh, this shape needs to be much darker. There's actually quite a lot to do here. I'll, I'll try and let it sit for a few moments and we'll see. Now I will show you uh, on the front camera here. So I don't know, hopefully it has a feeling of clouds, but notice how uh, the mine lacks a unity in the value here that should be a little lighter all throughout. Um, I don't know if I, it's probably not going to dry lighter. Uh, and if I try to salvage it, we can actually try. Let's see if I can salvage some of these dark spots that aren't necessary. We'll bring some paper and yeah, we'll see. It's uh, a high risk kind of move that I'm doing now. Because uh, I'll probably end up with a few annoying uh, backgrounds, but hopefully that lights it up just a little bit. And yes, it will be at the expense of maybe uh, the smoothness. Same here. You just go over it once with a bit of water and lift right off. Okay, I hope that makes it maybe look just a little bit closer to the reference. Um, so let's see, let me answer some questions here. And again, the, the, the answer is from afar. Does it look like clouds? I don't know, actually, maybe, maybe not. 
Um, maybe if I open the window and you'll get more light in, you'll be... Let's get rid of the reference for a second. Because it's really distracting. So, kind of looks like clouds. There are a lot of these small sharp shapes and maybe I should get... Sorry, muted myself for a second. Maybe I should get rid of for uh, the sake of simplicity, actually. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. I like here. I don't need this. I don't need all these small highlights. They're actually very distracting. So that's one thing I, I'll notice for n the next time. Uh, but in any case, let's see what you're saying. Uh, Pence Palacio, hello, Leroy. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, my friend. Oh, you're a bit out of frame. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Judy says, um, let's, let's bring it over here. Uh, Judy says, where was I? Yeah, okay, Liron, please tell me with a very detailed sky like this, what sort of a scene would you paint below it? Oh. Uh, very simple, like almost nothing in it. But that's, that's exactly what I'm trying to do to isolate my problem. So I won't mix it with the scene at all, probably. Probably it's just going to be the sky as the subject. Uh, right? I think that makes sense. Um, Verena says, hey, from Berlin. Christine Bourgeois says, great looking clouds. Thank you. Uh, go, go. The event. Not sure what the event is. Tom, this is a great example of how important good drawing uh, can be, I think. Yeah, if you have a really accurate drawing and clean, um, it can help, I guess, with knowing what you're painting in a way. Um, and then you can remove a bit of the painting-related pressure. Uh, Let's see, Drake, I'm stuck in a hospital room looking at the sky for the past six months. Wow, that's, that sounds rough. Uh, so this is a great subject for me to work on. Yeah, I bet. So sorry to hear. Um, I hope you get better if you want to share. Um, how you're feeling, feel free to. Uh, really sorry to hear. Um, Kelvin says, I gotta go now. Nightly Ron. <laughs> Good night, Kelvin. Uh, Susie says, whose palette uh, look the same? Uh, did I miss a message? Uh, or a bit out of... Oh, not sure. Uh, oh, okay. Whose palette look the same? Mm. Okay, not sure. <laughs> right again. Johnny2, do you enjoy painting for videos more than painting in private? No. Painting in, in, vi for, for in private is the best. But there is something nice to that giving a show that I actually enjoy in a different way than painting for myself. So I guess I enjoy both in different ways. But if, if I, there is something about being very focused in the artwork I'm working on that I think I enjoy a little better. And by the way, we'll remove the tape later and you'll see it's probably going to look a little better. Uh, uh, Tom says, I thought the extra cont contrast made it very dramatic in a cool way. Depends on how much you want to recreate a photo. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It could be a, have a positive use. Uh, Tarsicio says, hi, Liron. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Alessandro says, hi. Shelly says, uh, Leslie, hope you're uh, on demand and there you spring you soon. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, too. Yes, more simple general shapes combined with uh, randomized effects of the right brush strokes uh, would, may would be maybe better. Um, Susie says, this would be a good sky over a C at the bottom. Yeah, something very simple, if anything at all. This was really interesting to watch. I'm really scared of painting clouds and watercolor. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's finalize this real quick. Um, we'll make the bottom clouds a little more, a little fluffier. I'm going to work a little fast, okay, because I want to move on to the second one. Uh, so I'm going to make these fluffier in some spots that kind of scrub it out here as well um, this here annoys me a bit and we will do another again another iteration of it and hopefully we'll get something a little different uh, that will either be an improvement or will be interesting to see right I'm actually gonna paint with this brush now so here we go soft transition um, all of this needs to be softened, softened, softened here. Yeah. Um, now, do I want to darken some areas? Do I want to lighten some areas? I actually am considering leaving it as is, but let's do this. So I do want to darken this entire thing. Am I just being... No, no, I want to, I want to darken it. So I'm just spraying a bit of water there. I don't necessarily want to pre-wet everything. And then I'm going to move on with this slightly smaller brush. 
hopefully it's dry enough. I haven't even thought of it, but I think it is. And then I'm kind of gonna create what I see here like that. This will move around this shape that's a little lighter. And then we can blend the edges. Now, when you blend edges on top of an existing layer, and sorry, I know the painting's a little to the side, you have to be very careful not to overdo it. So you just put this one touch of water and that's it. Otherwise, you're running the risk of having things reawakened underneath. Uh, and in fact, I am running that risk. So let me use my hair dryer just to dry things up quickly. So in the middle of drying this, I noticed something that really bugs me. Uh, and let me try and fix that. I think I kind of lost the motif of two clouds um, because I let things go a little too light in some spots. So let me try and fix that real fast. We're now at a fixing stage, really. And to do that, I'm going to need to darken this background a bit, not too much. Just sometimes when I recognize a problem, I want to solve it as fast as I can because it's kind of obvious to me and fresh in my mind. So we'll do that. Some unifying factor of the background against, against this cloud in the front. So I'm basically filling in some areas with a bit of a darker paint. Like that. See, and then I can use this smaller brush once again to kind of blend that edge. Or you could even use a bit of paper to kind of dab at it if you want to kind of like this like that but the key here I did feel like I need to create that separation between top and bottom was it the right choice uh, hopefully hopefully yes but I'm not sure we'll, we'll see and then we can use this opportunity to bring out a few clouds here at the top that we didn't have before and of course we will blend this edge and this is not an easy subject at all it's okay to struggle with it I'm not having an easy time, definitely. And then I need to darken the other side as well, which is this. I went a little too light here. So I'll go ahead and connect. You see, I'm kind of trying to create a clearer separation between the two. Uh, I'm not going to use any opaque paint here. I don't, just don't think I need to, really. Like to add highlights. I don't feel like they're missing, <laughs> honestly, so I won't add them. This should work well. And now let's dry it real quick. I dropped a little drop of water on it, so I had to pause. And I forgot to take the chance to blend some of the edges. I'm working fast again, because I just want to make sure that um, the effects work well, right? Uh, here we go. And you, you can't be a perfectionist with this kind of a subject, honestly. Um, unless you're working on a huge piece of paper very slowly, very slowly, and trying to include each and every detail, uh, you just won't get everything done. Uh, and that's fine. So blend this. All of these should be way softer. So that's a little bit better. Let's dry it one more time real quick and we'll remove the tape and conclude this one. Good, so I think it looks really cool. Um, you'll always find things you wanna fix. Um, I'll try and stop myself, especially in this kind of a painting. I'll try to stop myself soon, but I could not help but notice that these edges are way too strong. And um, what else? Like this part could be darker, you see? That section is fairly light, so I'm gonna go over it again. I know I'm being a bit of a perfectionist. Just a bit. 
but I'm actually fine with that. And then we don't even need to do anything special, we'll just kind of blend all of the top edges as well as the bottom edges with a very slightly damp brush. Again, not to reawaken the layers underneath. And you see it kind of just maybe connected it a bit more. Now, let me sign this and we will remove the tape. Uh, so this become, became one of my favorite uh, brushes for inking actually. So this is the small brown synthetic. Uh, I've been doing all of the manga style inking with it. It's really fun and quite sharp and accurate. So yeah, that's good. I'm just gonna sign it somewhere. I don't know, I don't even know where. Let's do it here next to the paper's brand uh, watermark. That's always a good spot. <laughs> Need more water. Sometimes the signature is the hardest part for some reason. And let's remove the tape. So I'm fairly excited to see what this looks like without it. This will give it a bit more clarity to the composition, hopefully. And I will take a picture and maybe um, share it with you. So the, these are my clouds. Uh, again, I'm seeing tons of edges that I'll be like, yeah, I want to blend these, but um, these are all way too sharp. You could spend like 30 minutes just blending them. So let's agree that it's necessary. I'll try not to do too much of it, um, just for the sake of moving to the next one. So let me take a picture real quick and I'll show you what it looks like, maybe in a more clean way. Maybe I'll also open up the window just a bit. I know it's gonna throw off the light scheme. You'll have to forgive me because I wanna take a picture of this in the light. One second. Good, so we got it. Sorry, there's a lot of um, dead air moments today. <laughs> I'm gonna send it over to the Mac. Just to put it to the side, then I'll answer some questions. Uh, and thank you so much for uh, being super patient always and just sticking around and having fun. So it's a bit messy, but this is what I'm looking at. Get rid of this. It really is all in the flow. Um, but let's see here. So it's gonna open up, of course, probably huge. And I'll make it smaller. And in the meantime, ask if you have any uh, questions. Da, da, da. So this was Art Week, very enjoyable, focused a lot on art, obviously. Did a lot of anatomy, I will share that in an upcoming video. A lot of gestures, especially, figure drawing. So here is what I'm looking at. Uh, hopefully it looks nice, uh, and hopefully it looks like clouds. I don't know, you'll let me know. Uh, but I think it looks nice. And uh, we can do the other attempt soon. I just have, there's so much details in it that I'll have to maybe keep up the pace and maybe talk a little less, we'll see. Uh, but I guess, let me see what you're saying in the chat. The other attempt, uh, it looks, again, I showed it earlier, but it's even more like detailed. It's a nightmare of a drawing. It looks really like uh, filling in the, the areas. But in any case, uh, kind of those games that you just paint. Uh, let's see what you're saying. Um, uh, um, Shelly says, was this photo taken from a plane? It almost feels like above the clouds. Yeah, definitely it is. Let me show you the original one once again. This is the original one. So yeah, it's super above the clouds. Uh, that's why the pattern is uh, of light and shadow is a little different, I think, than what you'd see from below. Uh, but I cropped it because to deal with this is a complete nightmare. <laughs> Uh, so I basically took out the part that's kind of around here. See this diagonal cloud, if I just continue right here. 
um, and then you get the cropped. Oh, let me find it. Um, there we go. So hopefully you can see where this was taken from. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, it's a very complex reference photo, indeed. Um, da -da -da. Yeah, over C. Question. Uh, Liron, my question was too long and the first part is above, sorry. Oh, I couldn't, uh, where, where was it? Let's see again. Um, where is it? Maybe I didn't send it. I love your painting style. I'm trying to build my knowledge and confidence to be able to paint in a similar way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hopefully uh, the videos help. Uh, Monica says, hit the like, thank you so much. Petunia says, highly run at what level of dryness does spraying the area become more effective? Um, there's actually a lot you can do with spraying. You can spray it while it's still moist. You can spray it, I sprayed it when it was completely dry just now. Um, so you can do quite a lot with it. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the stage. The, the only thing, maybe, maybe once it's 70% dry, you don't want to, but either it's fully dry or it is 20% dry, or 30, 40, 60% dry, you can still spray. There's just very small moment when it's just about to be fully dry that you may want to avoid. Um, Cobbs Win asks, have you used a Gorilla Board instead of tape to keep paper from buckling? Uh, no, and I think someone else, or was it you, asked me about this before? Uh, I do have the Gorilla Plain Air Kit uh, that I haven't used too much yet. Uh, Leslie Drake, thank you for the well wishes. I'm having a second surgery this month. It's uh, not been easy, but the NHS staff, NHS, not sure what it is, uh, staff has been fabulous. Painting charcoals and embroidery keeps me saying, oh, good, good. So you, at least you get to create. Uh, and hopefully these uh, videos and live streams also help. Um, sorry, what was the brush you signed with? Oh, uh, yeah, that was uh, the small brown synthetic. Uh, and you can see it here. by Lebens and Brushes. I, I have a link, I should have a link in the description box. Um, and usually run for 20% off, by the way. Uh, Tom Dancer looks great, thank you. Leslie Drake looks inky. Yeah, I get that a lot in my black and white works. Uh, Johnny Two says, looks cool to me. I'm always afraid to make changes, corrections, but you teach how to do it properly. Thank you, says Barb White, thank you so much. Um, Leslie, uh, like the clouds we get over the North Sea, cool. Monica says, looks good, thank you Monica. Susie, I'm always amazed how much difference your third pass makes. It brought it together more smoothly, thank you so much for being brave. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, what about doing plan air somewhere around your town? Yeah, I should, and I should live stream it. John, love how you created the separation of the clouds you're on, thank you. Um, how is your biz and art week working out? Yeah, it's working out well, I got a lot of art done this week. Uh, thankfully. I think the biz week worked a little better than the art week. So I made huge progress in the business week, but in the art week, I, tr I did my best. I still don't feel like I got just the, enough time like I wanted to, but definitely more than if I would just do it normally. I did a lot of uh, gestures, a lot. And a lot of, I continued with the anatomy course and uh, made some good progress on the story I'm writing. More updates on that in the future. I actually think I'll open a new channel for all of the, all of the things manga related. We'll see. We'll see about that. I'm um, still considering my move here. Now, I do see that the, the video is extremely slow right now. So, my apologies. You pr can probably hear me okay, but it's just the uh, video that's stuck. So, sorry about that. So, here's what I think we'll do now. Um, I think I'll flip it over again to this next one, next attempt, and I'll, I think we'll do like we did the last time, kind of a silent stream where I just paint and try to focus. I think it will maybe lead to a bit of a better result. We'll see about that. Um, this one's a little more detailed, so maybe I can do a patch and then take a break, talk about what I did. Do another patch, take a break, talk about what I did, and maybe that'll, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. What, here's the thing. Again, I told you always be specific in what you want to work on. So I do feel like this is still not unified enough. So for the next wash, I'll try, the next attempt, I'll try getting it a bit smoother if I can. Um, I'll try getting everything like I got this part a little smoother. Okay. Um, so I'll go maybe a little quieter and you'll have to forgive me for that. 
and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna get started. I'll take a break after this section and we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll keep it also a little more high key this time. It's funny how the thing I immediately do is move a little closer to the to the paper that helps me see things a little better. I really follow these edges as much as I can. And then let's slide it up a bit near the right side again. And if anyone wants to kind of update on how they've been, feel free to. I don't usually just ask, but um, let me know how things are going and what challenges maybe you're experiencing, art or even just generally. I mean, it is probably a challenging time for many people. Uh, so yeah, I'm curious to hear from you. Uh, so this pretty much wraps up that kind of topmost part. And then we can move on to this larger section. So here I'll have to use a bit of a larger brush. Let's see if I can maybe render the details a little more accurately. Let's see about that. Uh, definitely a challenging one. Requires a lot of focus. And I think I will uh, benefit from doing another uh, iteration on my own, talking about that earlier. So I'm trying to be more accurate, but with that, I'll also aspire to um, to get a better flow. So it's kind of a funny play, not an easy one to So now in the open areas, I'll just, I think I'll just cover it up and maybe later we'll figure out uh, the nuances of the lights and darks. Should I do like a flat wash and just cover everything that's not a highlight, I wonder. Yeah, I'll have to work faster if I want to get a smooth result here. So these are just a few small highlights. I'm kind of working my way around. This actually connects here. The only thing I'm not too concerned with is those edges, again, because we can blend them later with uh, that blending brush. But uh, it's still, it's funny how, even when I don't worry about these, it's still an extremely challenging subject, honestly this little shape here and keeping it random isn't easy to, you know. And then we reach that lower edge for the clouds that are below. Now here, I have to darken it a bit. So this section is darker like that underneath this part it's going to be a highlight it's also a little darker see i can't afford pretty much any lack of flow i have to keep things flowing together if i want this to look right um, so i'm trying we'll see This here is dark. I'm not sure what these are. I'll just leave a few. Hopefully I didn't leave too many of these kind of bold standout highlights. And let's move here. Uh, let's do a bit of wet and wet here. Just to get some of these clouds kind of popping out. Thanks to the shadow behind them. Right? Uh, like this. Hopefully that'll make sense. I could get 
the result is very similar to the previous one. Like, you don't know. You put in the work and you hope for the best, but honestly, I have no idea. Now, here's what I'm going to do a bit different here. I'm going to pull this using water. That way, I'll get a lighter wash on the bottom here. And I'm going to use this opportunity to blend as many of these edges as I can. Which is not a lot, but maybe just a bit like this. Going against the direction of the hairs of the brush can really help, even though we know it makes some people cringe. Uh, and I'm going to keep a distance here so that I can blend upwards, okay? So we'll see how that goes. Leave this small highlight here. Let's kill off these highlights. And then let's blend. Hopefully I'll succeed. A bit too much water on the brush. I'm still getting used to some of these, so you'll have to forgive me. And hopefully we got that section, I don't know, a little better flow than the previous attempt. Yes, there's a lot of edges to blend, but at least the flow is good. So I'm going to move on straight next to the next one. Um, actually, maybe I'll just try and finish this one faster. Let me try and push this all the way to at least finishing that first wash, okay? And I'll have to study Sergei Tamarev's work a little because he's really a genius. And when it comes to clouds and skies. It's funny how some of his paintings I don't even like that much, but specifically his Clouds are just insane, you know. Um, maybe also working larger will help, again, as I mentioned before. Sometimes when you work larger, there's just more room for error and you, people see the overall picture a little better sometimes. So not to blame it on the size of the painting, but just as a general kind of thing I noticed. Yeah, not easy at all, I must admit. Now, let's see. This is good. It's dark. A bit darker near the bottom, but not too much. So, kind of like this. And we'll continue with this value all the way to the left. Now, there are a lot more details, like smaller details here. in the reference that I'm kind of missing. Just because of the size of the paper, honestly. Uh, would be nice maybe to do another version. Yeah, I think I will do another larger version. The challenge then becomes like, how do I get the even washes when it's such a big piece of paper with so many, uh, you know, small details? And, and yeah, that's a different challenge in and of itself. And usually I'll, I tell you, you know, don't worry about the transitions being smooth all the time like in portraits or stuff like that. But with clouds, it kind of becomes a little more important. So that's a question I still didn't answer for me. Uh, there are plenty of those. So I think after this one, I will, after this wash, I'll stop, see what you're writing, then we'll blend some edges, or maybe we'll continue with the next wash and then blend some edges so we don't have to work twice. Because if I blend once and then add some darkness, I'll have to blend again. So, okay. Now here there's this kind of a shadow within the shadow, a bit of a floof texture here and there. Now I haven't gone with the more impressionistic approach, but it could work even better. Who knows, you know, if you're maybe simplifying some things a little more, kind of like I would treat uh, even a portrait, as I mentioned earlier. Maybe it would work better. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, in just a second, I'll see your messages and we can uh, continue discussing. Don't hesitate to write any questions you may have. Working on a few really interesting stuff for you. A couple of courses. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get a serious dent in those next week. We'll see. And maybe I'll spray some water here make things move a bit. And let's quickly blend some edges using our trusty blending brush. Hopefully you can see things properly. 
I think it looks like loud, but <laughs> I'm so close to the picture that it's funny how sometimes I can't even tell, you know? Um, so yeah, while it's still wet, this blends really well. Blends the edges very nicely. Uh, where was my reference? Here we go. Then every once in a while I have to kind of rinse it a bit. Like that. Yeah, that's good. And let's get, uh, let's stop here. Let's stop here. Because I said I'll do maybe another wash. We'll see. Um, let me think about it. There are some very harsh edges here. Um, and some areas that's gonna, that are going to need darkening. Let's dry this using the uh, hair dryer. Then I'll answer questions and we'll try and darken yet again before we get those edges. Yeah, so here's the thing. Like right now, because the clouds are a rounded entity, these edges actually mean a lot. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll choose a different strategy next time. Maybe I'll pre-wet. Maybe I'll do that. We'll see. But because of that, it's very important to get that smoothness, but also get the darkness below. Because if you look, that really gives it its rounded form. Okay? Uh, and again, it's a very complex subject, uh, but I'll, I'll do my best. So let's see what you're saying here, and then we'll continue. Uh, John says, Lava, you created a separation. Thank you, John. Yes, I remember. I read those. Answer that. Sheetal says, uh, sends uh, smileys with hearts. Thank you. National Health Service. Oh, okay. NHS. Got it. Got it, Leslie. Uh, Fernando Gonzalez, what brand of watercolor do you use? This one is Kohinoor in particular. Uh, but I love a bunch of brands. All professional brands I found something I liked about. Uh, Michelle says, would love to see more black and white value studies, demonstrations, and help with choosing, mixing the colors to the correct value. Yeah, definitely. That's what I'm focusing on for the next while. Uh, Tom Denser, I think my art challenge is still being quite new, especially watercolor. Uh, tried one last night, which had a little car in the corner and made a complete mess of it. Needs a lot more regular practice. Yeah, definitely. It just, just takes a lot of practice. Tom says, and maybe a drawing course. Yeah, I'll... I'll I'll think, I just think there are people that do it better than me and really dive deep on it. But I'll, I'll think about it for sure. Judy Franklin, thank you for a wonderful demonstration and for answering my question. You are an excellent teacher. Thank you. Uh, Tom, do many people in chat get much air in new paint tubes? Been using Cotman, all I could afford, which did this a bit interesting. I haven't experienced this even with Cotman. It's very interesting, Tom. Sorry that you had that experience. Uh, Johnny 2, is it cold press or rough? Um, this, I believe, is cold. Oh, was it rough? I think it's rough, actually. Let me check. I don't remember if it says, but I'll check. Just one second. Uh, but I like both. Yeah, I'm not sure. If I had to guess, I'd guess rough, uh, but I really love both. And I would suggest actually starting with cold press. And by the way, John can answer because he got it for me. Uh, I prefer personally to start with cold press and then try the rough because rough can be very aggressive in, uh, when you get started. Um, Susie Wood, uh, the background first tier look more distant, worked on pretty wet paper. I'm thinking of the advice I... Um, let's see here. Would the background first tier look more distant? Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. Let me know. Uh, try and rephrase it and in one message we'll see. Hopefully I understand. Sorry, I'm a little slow today. Uh, how do you prep your paper? I do nothing. I just tape it onto a trusty board. That's it. Um, Shelly Pryor, you are basically a loose painter, but I often hear you say I'm going to try and do this a bit more accurately. I'm a very realistic painter and say the exact opposite. Oh, funny. Yeah, struggle is real. Yeah, that's really, uh, that's really uh, interesting. So I'm going to look up uh, some of your work because I do remember it's pretty spectacular. 
Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, it's really hard for me to keep track of all the artists I follow, but I remember your work, it's insane, yeah. So everyone, go check out Shelley Pryor's work. Super beautiful, realistic. Um, my, my question to you, Shelley, would be how do you balance the realism with technique? Meaning, when you paint something that is very, very, very uh, detailed and realistic, how do you get over the fact that sometimes an even wash needs to be created? Um, do you work in smaller sections and not worry about connecting everything? Or do you work in thin glazes? I'm actually curious to hear, let me know. Um, hopefully you'll uh, answer that in the chat, super curious. Uh, but yeah, I remember <laughs> your art is crazy. Uh, really beautiful. Love the swans. <laughs> um, uh, size does better when painting, yeah. Johnny to Koinur, colors from Czech Republic, nice. Uh, should be decent quality, yeah. Yeah, from uh, Czech Republic. I remember visiting Prague once and just randomly seeing the store and walking in. Uh, but that's not where I got it, by the way. Uh, I got them uh, from someone here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hi, my idol. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the chat messages. Things, interesting things going on in the chat. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue with this wash. Now, I'm going to do it as a la prima as I can, meaning I'll try and keep it kind of loose and washy um, while getting the right value where I want it to be. So I actually really like this transition, so let's not touch that. Let's start here, okay? And I'm just going over some areas that I feel like need to be a little darker, okay? Now the challenge when doing that, and this is a huge no-no by me, is that it's easier to kind of lose all the beautiful progress you made in previous washes when you did paint the shapes beautifully. So now when you add another wash, you actually have to follow what you did in the previous ones, and that's not always easy, so we'll see. Uh, I promise to do my best. That's all I can promise. Um, so, and I'm actually fine with it not reaching all the way to the top again because some of the top parts are a little uh, lighter. Let's see here. So I'll come back with a bit of water, not a lot, and kind of connect this, help the paint move up and get lighter the more up it moves. Uh, I'm going to cover this thing. I don't know what it is. This should be here, so I'll keep it. Um, this here, of course, I'm leaving. Painting around this shape, around these clouds. I think this time I got it to work a little better. We'll see. It's funny because I had a bit of a rougher start, but now I feel like it's, it's going to connect a little better. We'll see. So, and this actually cuts through some of the clouds here. And real fast, I'm gonna use this brush to connect this to the top, connect this to the top, get a good flow. That's not good. That background is not something I wanted to happen here. Let's see if I can mitigate it. <laughs> that wasn't my plan. Uh, come back with some water and help this paint move in here. Blend this edge here, blend this here. And maybe continue uh, like this with a bit of water because this left side is a little lighter. And I actually like these lighter, so maybe we won't go dark on the bottom. I actually like that this is darker than that. So that's good. Now, what else? I actually think I'll leave it this way and just blend some of the some of the edges. Some when I say some, I mean like half of them. <laughs> Let's do that. Let me get some more paper here. Oops. Made the paper fly. Um, and I'll just blend all the edges, just run through it fast. Try doing my best, okay? We'll see how it goes. This, uh, this stage is, it's not necessarily the most interesting, I will admit, so Sorry if it's boring. It is, however, necessary. Now, when I'm blending the edge, I really do care about where the brush touches. And that's really important. 
Um, and by the way, I'll show you a cool effect in a second. I want to touch closer to the paint rather than closer to the white because then I'm at less risk of losing the highlights. Okay, so I'm starting on the paint and then slightly moving up. I hope you understand what I mean. It's pretty straightforward, but I won't go, for example, I won't blend here. I'll blend here, right on that paint, not here, here. Okay, and so if you want to get a cool effect in, even though it may be a little exaggerated, you can actually get a ray of light kind of coming through from behind the clouds, like this, you see, and then lift it a bit. But you know what, let's not take that risk. I actually hate it. <laughs> let's not do more of that. Uh, also because the paint isn't fully dry, but that's fine. Uh, actually, should I dry it a bit just to make sure it dries evenly? Let's dry it real fast and then we'll continue with blending. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Yep. <laughs> Ruth is going to go on a walk. And we'll continue blending these edges. So, here, very important. Like that. Here. See how it just looks so much better um, here as well. Very important. So we put all the water and we still got this very uh, harsh edge. And very important, all of these sections. This is super important. Hopefully this brush is going to last, but I, I have low expectations. So luckily I have more. Uh, because just I'm, I'm being very rugged with it. Uh, here. And yeah, I got nothing too interesting about this stage, but it does make it look a little more like clouds. You see how this dried still too light in, to my taste? That's a little annoying, but it's fine. So here's what I'll try and do next time. The next time I tackle this subject, I can actually show you here. Instead of going for that, that wash, I'll do this. For the tops of the clouds, I'll just wet them, right? All around the tops of all the clouds. And then I'll come back with the wash and so I'll get the smoother edge. It's just such a complex kind of top of the cloud that it'll take some time to pre-wet it. That was my fear, right? And then uh, we'll have the background kind of like this. That I didn't want to use this kind of technique, uh, but I may have to. I may have to to get that smooth transition, you know, instead of scrubbing all of these edges. Uh, but that's the trade-off, you know. Uh, based on the technique you use at one stage, you'll have to do things maybe a little differently on the next stages. So that's just how it is. I feel like my water is becoming a little too contaminated too, so this brush uh, doesn't deal with it too well. But in any case, I actually think this gets the point across pretty well, and I think we can stop soon. Uh, let's blend this, blend that. Yeah. So I don't know, it's, it's interesting. I'll show you both, just to kind of... Uh -huh. Let's actually, maybe I'll just take a picture of both. But in any case, here are both. Do I want to go over this one again? I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know. I think we'll, I think we'll stop it now. Um, I'd actually want to maybe do another one kind of in private and see how it goes. Um, I'll leave this as is, even though I see a lot of things darkening, playing around with edges just because I feel like I'm not effective anymore. So I'll actually take a break. Um, 
do another iteration and then post it like a post here on YouTube because uh, I see that people do see these. Uh, let me know if that's something you're interested in. But it's, it's a very interesting scene. And technique-wise, it's not easy again. Um, I feel like I got the gist of it. So if you take a few steps back, if you look at it from far, yeah, it looks good. But to really get it to look the way I want, further work will be necessary. And you do see how the darks here really make a difference compared to the other one. Even though they both have kind of their um, gracefulness in a way. So let's sign the other one, remove the tape, do a little Q&A and then wrap it up. I actually have uh, a lot of work that I still want to do today. Uh, so we'll see about that. And let me know if you're watching this after the fact or if you're watching this live uh, let me know in the chat or in the comment, of course, um, what else you'd want me to do in the live streams. Um, I want to try maybe doing a couple of things that aren't just painting. Once again, I did, you know, in the past it was more painting. Uh, and then I kind of did a lot of sketchbook tours and story times and stuff like that. Uh, let me know what else you'd want me to do. And I wanted to say something else, but I forgot. It was a cool thing to say, but I forgot. I'll remember later. Uh, but for now, let's remove the tape. Let's see the end result here. One side, another side. Get rid of this. Another one, and the last side. Right here. So yeah, I think it looks cool. I think both of these look cool. And as always, there's a lot to improve. Let's get rid of this other one. Come on, get out of here. So yeah, kind of cool. Let me take a picture of these both in the light. I'm gonna open the window because we're not gonna paint anymore. Uh, so we can afford the uneven lighting. And then let me take a quick photo of both of these and I'll set them to the side. See, I hate the light. Give me a second, I'll take a better pic. <laughs> okay, we got it. Let me send it over. This looks good. This is a picture with good light. Um, and then we'll switch over to the chat and I'll also answer some of your questions. This one's really good. This is a good pick. I don't want to, let's see here, just make sure that you can hear me. Yeah, okay. I don't want to, um, why can't I find my Mac? Oh, there we go. Let's see here. Give me one sec. I'll bring it over. We'll move here. Yeah, I don't want to have the blind open because then the light on the table goes crazy. Uh, but when we're just looking at my face, that's actually okay. Um, so I don't mind that. I do know it can make the video a little grainy, so I will apologize for that. I will apologize for the quality of the stream. And I will apologize for everything. Uh, let's see here. And there we go. So the two together actually look really cool, in my opinion. So at the top, we have the first attempt, I believe. The second, we have the second attempt. And I love how it's, they're different, but also you can tell it's kind of the same view. So yeah, that's very interesting. And hopefully you enjoyed seeing the process. Now let me, let me address, sorry, I have a bunch of technical difficulties today, uh, but hopefully you enjoy the process and I'll look at some questions. If I have good insights or answers, I'd be happy to answer. Um, the top left first section of the cloud in the photo looks very dark, but in a painting, it's not giving distance. I was thinking paler top section might uh, give more depth. Yeah, interesting. That could be the case. I actually tried to stay kind of close to the reference, so I didn't do it this time, but I, I get it. Yeah, I, I agree. It could be. 
Uh, maybe to just kind of smoothen it out and move it a little to the back. And I went too dark too, so um, it's cold press. Okay, so yeah, the paper is cold press, not rough. Um, thank you, John. Uh, Shelly, I've learned to paint loose, but it doesn't come as naturally to me. I use a whole combination of techniques from very wet to dry and everything between. Um, cool. Very cool. I'm interested in like how you get the flow and, and maintain it. That's that's really insane. Um, oh, cute dog. Yeah, Ruth is so annoying. Like she's she keeps trying to lick my face all day long. I don't mind that, but the the one time I need her to show some affection to me live stream, I need it. She doesn't. So yeah, that's just like her. Johnny Two, when painting this, did you try to see 3D shapes of various values or 2D shapes or 3D shapes? Um, a combination of both. Sometimes it's more effective to think of things as 3D shapes in the moment, but overall, yes, I am trying to think about it as 3D shapes. Very complex 3D shapes that have no shape and a complex shape at the same time. Cutie Ruthie. A lag problem, yeah, sorry about that. Pencil Hero. So he said, I do like the second one. It feels like uh, more sunlight is peeping through. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the second one, I got the gradation on the bottom clouds a little. I don't know. The overall balance just looks a little better. Uh, even though I missed a lot of the nuances. Yes, there's a lot more to add here. Um, and again, it's only the accurate values. So if you have a scene that's a v just a combination of very complex values, uh, it's not easy. Um, but yeah. If you want to try a different approach, what I would do is maybe do th very thin glazes. So like an initial glaze that covers everything but the highlights and blend the edges already while it's wet. And uh, then another kind of glaze that darkens the areas that need to be darkened. Maybe working in thinner glazes would be a better idea here. I don't know. Uh, Marjorie, hope everybody learned a lot today. I will have to watch later because last night's loud thunderstorm kept me awake and I just got up. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry to hear that. Um, Isabel uh, Sadner. Uh, it really feels like a storm is coming. Cool. Kathy B, I like the second one, but would work a bit more on the right uh, sign side. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I kind of just decided to stop it. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I like the second one too. It looks fluffier. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it looks a bit fluffier. I think it's mainly uh, this area that helps it. So here, this section as compared to uh, this section where I lost some of the fluffiness, right? So I think that area is... And it's amazing how sometimes a small area will have a great effect on the entire thing. Um, Sonia, best day ever your book just arrived and watching you online. Thank you so much. So cool. Uh, which book is it? Thank you for getting it. Much appreciated. Tumbo artwork, no apologies necessary. Glad to have li the live stream. Thank you so much. Uh, Tom, they're both great. Second one is closer value to the source. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, maybe a bit. Yeah, maybe a bit. It's not too dark, that's for sure. Not as, as dark as the first one. Uh, Ruth says her love is not a performance. Uh, Susie, maybe Ruth is camera shy. Yeah, probably. Uh, oh my god, it looks so good. Yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, I, I really do hope you learned something from today. Uh, I'll, I'll cut this one uh, shorter, it means an hour and a half instead of two hours, because I still have a lot of work to get done. Um, and I, this week was very tiring, even though I created a lot, or maybe because I created a lot. Uh, it was as tiring as the, uh, by the way, this dried nicely. It was as tiring as, uh, as the business week, to be honest with you. Uh, a lot of time painting, drawing, and also doing the things that I have to do, like making sure the content is out. Uh, some some of it, most of it I scheduled in advance. Um, customer support, emails, stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, a fun week overall, an improvement for sure from when doing everything together, at least now it feels like it. I'm um, a bit tired today, even though I slept more hours than usual. I still got up a little more tired for some reason. Uh, but yeah, having a good time painting, this was great practice for me. And as you can see, there's like, I'm still learning this doing the best I can with my current abilities and trying to uh, improve them um, so that I can share better stuff with you. Uh, the course I'm working on, I'm fairly excited about. Uh, the course I already have, the Frustration Free Water Core course, I'm also very excited about. Thank you to uh, quite a lot of people who bought it yesterday. For some reason, I saw a lot of purchases, so thank you for that. Um, and if you want to learn how to paint 
without the frustration. Uh, not scenes that are as complex as this one, but uh, things that maybe lend themselves better to beginners, but still to get rid of the stifleness and feeling frustrated with not being able to let go and all of that, definitely check out the course, Frustration Free Watercolor. Uh, link in the description box below. Also be sure to check out Tracy's brushes. I think, um, interesting, let's, let me make sure that there is a link there. Um, uh, yeah, there isn't in this one, so I'll edit. Uh -huh. And then you can use uh, Liron coupon code to get 20% off. So if you're planning already on buying a brush, um, why not get the 20% off? I get a commission from it, of course. Uh, so <laughs> I will thank you too. Uh, and Tracy is a great guy, great brushes, highly recommend. Um, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but I'm softening edges as I go before they dry with a clean uh, blotted brush. Clean blotted brush, interesting. Large areas are often wet and wet with tilted board. Interesting, interesting, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll go over and read it again and try to figure out. Oh, and Sonia says how to sketch landscapes, super cool. I'm part of Angela Affairs community and saw your interview. Cool, cool, so welcome aboard. It's, it was a great, great fun, the interview. Uh, had a good time. And thank you so, so much for tuning in. Much appreciated. Thank you for liking the video, for following, subscribing, getting the courses, getting the books. Much, much appreciated. You helped me uh, to be able to do the things I do. I will see you again in the next vid and also in the next live stream next week.